Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. I was doing the Mr. Olympia most muscular pose, and I hit my finger oh. on the see, on the, oh. on the mute button, and yeah. then I remembered that I have a mute button. <laughs> you forgot about it. I completely oh, forgot about Good it. Job. Look, you can hear me, and now you can't hear me. Good job. But it's not so bad because we don't have uh, uh, Gerald today with yeah. us. Okay, we have Tim Pool on the show today. <laughs> what? And for those who are not members of Mug Club, then we have a, an extended like 30 minutes behind oh, the yeah. paywall because oh, we can't right. talk about the stuff on YouTube. Uh, question of the day before I introduce everyone else. I used to dig Taylor Swift, was a fan. I'm done. Uh, anyone else feel that way? Also, be honest, how much do you really know about the Equality Act, and do you support it? Because it's something that's been talked about quite a bit. Seems most people don't know their thumb from their wiener. Uh, <laughs> before we get to news of the day, my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is here. How are you, sir? Wonderful. Glad to be here. A lot of good feedback. Let him know you love him, because yeah. a lot of people are, hey, I'm glad that he's in the, he's in third chair there. And, not my uh, mother. we have quarter black chair. At What's, oh, She's also disappointed man? that you're not a doctor. You're only a lawyer. Hood pass. Got it? Good. Dog. And replacing Gerald because his back surgery went yep. successfully is Gerald B. today. So, good. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there we go. He's got the wine of the day. Spitting Bogle. image. Good job. Bogle. Spitting image. That shows up on our accounting sheet as Brittany. Yeah. That doll. That's not a joke. Multiple, I have a receipt yeah. for Brittany. There's more words on there, but we can't say them. Yes, there are more words on there. It's very uncomfortable sending your mother to purchase those. All right. We're going to be talking about the Equality Act. Taylor Swift, of course, yes. Tim Pool. But top story before any of that, Bernie Sanders this week praised China, you know them, China's leadership in a recent interview. Bernie, uh, this comes from Washington Examiner, Bernie said that China and its leadership have made more progress in addressing extreme poverty than any country in the history of civilization and have done a lot of things for their people. Obviously a lot of outrage. Uh, the Manhattan Institute think tank issued the following rebuttal. Donald Trump don't trust China. China is asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy when you go from, uh, well, we're just going to murder 100,000 less people here of the poorest <laughs> citizens. Yeah. And I'll look at the progress. Well, you know what? Okay, let's be, this is important. The definition of extreme poverty here we're talking about is less than $2 a day. Okay, so when he's talking about China bringing them out of that, by the, it's, it's about, uh, I think it was 88%, mm. and now it's 0.7%. Huh. So the reduction, by the way, this was in uh, 81. I don't have the exact numbers now. I think this is 2015. I think we have the overlay from yeah. Forbes. So the reduction in poverty in China is based, it directly correlates to them opening up their markets, even though it's not really a free market economy right. anymore. Still not, still not free, but freer. 
Free her. <laughs> yes. Her-ish. So they're still, now they're at 0.7 for extreme poverty. In the U.S., it's about 0.1. But keep in mind, the average salary in China, the average income is $12,000, not even close to half that of the United States. Well, and this is the same government that is now persecuting, persecuting Christians and locking up pastors for just yeah. undermining the government. Yeah, they've done a ton for their people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it made yeah. sense, right? So they gave more jobs to the poor and said, hey, as a, as a condition of coming out of extreme poverty, you must crush all civil liberties. Right. Just, you know, oh, just say, okay. here's a baton, good luck. So, new rule book. You can make sneaker, yeah, but have no Bible. <laughs> was that Asian Bill Maher? That was Asian Bill Maher. Yeah, <laughs> so tired of the Bible. Go make your Nikes. They would make, I always feel like Asians would make the worst spies, Chinese, as really? well. Baloney. Really? Yeah. Well, they're easy to spot and they're bad actors. <laughs> I call, I call no. That's why be, no one would hire an Asian to be a spy, which is why we would be great at it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you'd Not be like, what is that all? guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, go get some low main. I mean, oh, I mean, come on. Yeah, Mr. Zuckerberg, you store all your personal photos in the cloud? Huh? You use a cloud? Yeah, just curious. <laughs> Look, no Bible. Um, I don't know why he would a trench coat. Apparently, people yeah, keep Bibles like, in their <laughs> trench coats. Sticking with political news, Washington, D.C. Uh, woman is now claiming that Ilhan Omar stole her husband. This comes from New York Post. According to divorce papers, a cheating spouse told her he was having an affair with the congresswoman, then made a shocking declaration of love for Omar before he ditched his current wife. This was trending everywhere when reached for, con- uh, reached for comment. The congresswoman responded, hey, he was my brother first. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Little on the nose, but warranted. Think how unlikable must his wife have been? I want to know yeah, who lost out to Ilhan cream. Omar. Real ice cream. I, I think they mis- there's a misinterpretation. It wasn't. It was, those weren't tears of sadness. They were tears of joy. <laughs> yes. Oh. By the way, did you know she has like 22 moving, uh, not moving, traffic violations, parking tickets. At 22, I think since 2009. Amateur. Mm-hmm. And she still has a license? <laughs> Do you have more than that as far as parking? I don't probably. know anyone. I mean, he what? is Asian. No, traffic violations, probably not. Depends. Well, Actual no respect versus for the law. caught. Yeah. Gosh, I was very surprised when I saw it. Listen, if people come to our country, they should respect our laws or go back to the shitholes. Hey, this is a great story. I will not go back to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, toy company, uh, Hasbro, they now own... Death Row Records. <laughs> awesome. So the corporation known for you know Mr. Potato Head, the Power Rangers toy line, announced that they will join Brilliant. forces with the label uh, most known for West Coast. Very important to note, West Coast gangster rap. <laughs> yes. The company is attempting a brand rollout actually by Christmas now with the uh, new Suge Knight Ruxpin. What's wrong with little quarter black? He had a rough day at school. He said none of the kids would talk to him. I have an idea. Oh boy, Suge Knight Ruxpin. I swear to y'all, it's like this. I'm going to beat the dog out of you. If a nigga telling you that the police didn't do it, they're a punk ass So if I ask me if I know who killed Tupac, I'm the n- said, hey, absolutely not. I'm going to f*** you up, man. That light f*** me up. Good night, Suge Knight Ruxpin. You'll be my best friend forever. Because we're all going to die. Nobody's going to leave here alive and... People die all the time. Suge Knight Ruxpin, batteries and Dr. Dre's masters, sold separately. <laughs> it, is, it is remarkable it's how much bear. quarter black oh. Garrett made that bear look like Suge Knight. I know my people. I Amazing. had no idea that we uh, had that kind of production value. Excellent. You could be Chinese with that kind of tailoring and yes. so it work. Thank you. We also bound its feet. Um... <laughs> I've always said this, like, when I retire, when I don't do this show anymore, I want to be the Suge Knight, without the felonies, of conservative yeah, media. I want to be the guy who can help support other conservatives. You know, how if you have good shows that you want to pitch, you know, eventually we'll end up producing that, and maybe I'll hang vanilla ice over a balcony. <laughs> <laughs> we all aspire to that level of Everybody success. Everybody wants to do that. Oh, Suge Knight. Uh, continuing with uh, music-related news, uh, the MTV Music Video Awards were this week, which we'll get to, obviously, because uh, Taylor Swift a little later in the Equality Act, but uh, former NSYNC member Lance Bass showed up in a pink tuxedo. Call me crazy, but I'm starting to think Lance Bass is gay. <laughs> so this was interesting. There was um, a story about fake news is bit. said uh, to create fake memories. This was a new study. comes from oh. Psych Central. According to the Ireland study, people can form false memories after seeing fake news stories, especially hmm. if those stories align with their political beliefs. Wait, wait. So you're telling me that I didn't have sex with Bat Boy? Oh, no, you definitely had sex with Bat Boy. Yeah, you had sex with Bat Boy. There's no doubt. This is more, we're talking more like uh, political memories oh. might be tainted by the brush of time. 
Yeah. <sighs> You don't get do-overs on that one. Uh, this next one, we were writing this bit. We couldn't get away from it sounding like Norm MacDonald in our head, so we're going to do this yeah. as a Norm MacDonald joke. Uh, all right, here, let me get in. <clears throat> all right, so uh, today is the birthday of, uh, you know, both Michael Jackson and Ingrid Birdman. Uh, one captured the hearts of millions in her portrayal of Issa Lund in the classic film Casablanca, a uh, film some have called the apex of cinema. The other was a homosexual pedophile. <laughs> so, you know. Like to have sex with kids there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right, end Norm tribute. We would love to have you on the show, Norm. Uh, yes, please. That would please be great. Yeah, my Wild Turkey 101. You know, can't get enough of Wild Turkey 101. Uh, apparently, by the way, there's a new blood sucking leech that's been identified in DC area swamps. Oh. All the news that's fit to not even print talk, it's a slow news week. So we're just, <laughs> I mean, we're covering the whole spectrum. This comes from, when you know it comes from a local Fox affiliate, it's a slow <laughs> news week. Mm -hmm. This comes from Fox 5 DC. The scientists who discovered the new straw. species said that the leech is not something new uh, that's come up, but it's been there the whole time unrecognized, which I'm told is actually the subject of this season's premiere of River Monsters, our nation's capital. So you got, wow. yeah. yeah. It's the, horrifying. the Bucharus <laughs> Lampreyness. Ah. Made its way species. in through uh, Lake Champlain, it's I think, horrifying. and then the Great Lakes. Uh, <laughs> speaking of bodies, let's turn to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Millie, did you have anything? What do you think there, uh, Gerald B? Ah, as usual. Well said. Mm. Astute. <laughs> Turning to the Pacific Northwest, uh, a million dollars of cocaine was found hidden in bananas. Police uncovered 45 what? kilograms of cocaine. <laughs> In three different Washington supermarkets, all hidden in different kinds of boxes of bananas. That's though, a plan. Yeah. We That's really, we, we should have suspected it, considering <laughs> Curious George's most recent outing. George eats a human face. So that was... <laughs> for Wait, people I, listening I to... Rest, was it cocaine or bath that. salts? I mean... I, a lot of, you know, the guy who ate the face of Miami bath salts, he only tested positive for marijuana. A lot of people don't know that. I'm not saying marijuana makes everyone strain. eat a face, but I think he was a paranoid <laughs> schizophrenic. Wow. And then, you know, a little bit of uh, a little bit of Tahoe OG pushed him over the edge. Yeah. A little bit, of, uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of platinum OG, mm. a little bit of blue dream, a little bit of Skywalker Kush, a little it's bit of pur on this. purple stripe. OG. <laughs> I don't know. I just think if you say Kush or OG, that gives you a pot name, right? Yeah. So it's so funny. It's like, this strain, uh, this strain will uh, help you sleep, Close. and this strain helps cure cancer. What does this strain do? This strain makes you really energetic and focused. What are they? They're both pot. <laughs> anyway. that, that's what they are. <laughs> All right. One's from this greenhouse. One's from this greenhouse. Which one makes me not eat a face? You know, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> Once it leaves I mean, the greenhouse, really you'll know you. at the you'll know after you try. It. You'll know after, because <laughs> you end up in the clink. Uh, a NASA astronaut, by the way, been accused of stealing her estranged wife's identity from space. Good job. So in New York Post, she's accused of improperly accessing the wife's bank account while on the International Space <laughs> Station. So one small step for man, one giant leap for lesbian space criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Think about this. This is this is this Amazing. is going, the men's rights sort of sexist. They're going to use this forever. Men have been going up to space forever. No real problems. Drama free. One woman goes up. Identity fraud immediately. Yeah. I mean, there's I mean other women in space that have committed crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all crime in space, 100 percent. Namely, the crime of taking up the seat where a man could have been. Finally, oh, it's just not well documented. The, the woman on woman crime. The worst thing is when we, you know we say this and obviously we're being sarcastic. Someone in the comment section is like, that's Right, I was gonna send you. See, yes. <laughs> no women in space. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're clear. The guy's guy there. He's like, delete, 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 delete. Uh, I was already typing. Women can go in space as passengers. I just don't believe in female pilots. <laughs> That's all. I believe in female pilots. I don't. They believe they exist. I know they exist. I mean, they do exist. <laughs> I just okay. I should say I don't trust them. <laughs> as for directions, honey, we're just going up. <laughs> I trust them. That's it. I would let Gerald fly. Can place. you end up where it says oh. in the ticket? Don't pressure me. <laughs> and then they make the joke that like men are too afraid to look at a map. It's like, yeah, but you know what? We end up there, and you call me saying, "Do I turn left at the McDonald's?" <laughs> what? Yeah. Give me a landmark. Go south. I don't know. Is that the CVS? I don't know. What? To, just go south. Is Walgreens? I'm sorry. Are you married to Carlos? <laughs> we have to bleep that. Uh, <laughs> Soft bleep. <laughs> People will know. It. Finally, uh, there's this story where Andrew Yang, uh, Yang gangers out there, hello, yeah. admits uh, to having once named his pectoral muscles. He named his right pec Rex and his left pec 
Lex. Derivative. And apparently in college, he could jostle them on command to impress the girls. Um, if the girls were impressed, he'd then introduce them to, uh, allegedly, Wang Hung, which, besides being racist, unfortunately, turned out to be a disappointing yeah. exaggeration. <laughs> so, named his what do you think about that, Suge Knight uh, Ruxpin? Oh. I'll beat his mother ass and kick him square in his mother ass and play with his titties. Hey, Suge Knight <laughs> Ruxpin, don't you know you're wow. not supposed huh. to hate? That's aggressive. Up. You ass mother that's enough out of you, <laughs> Suge Knight Horrible. Ruxpin. Horrible. I'm sorry you have to sit Ugh. next to that, Bill. I, hey, it's fine. We're, we're friends. I don't understand why he's not a black bear, though. <sighs> well, Bill DeBear bear was bear. running low on inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Just so many Suge Knight Ruxpins. I do feel as though many, many times when we go and we purchase these items and they ask us what it's for, if we gave them an honest answer, they would not sell to I us. Lie. I lie every time. <laughs> That's what we're going to start doing is just Crowder confronts where you go and try and buy stuff honestly, and they're like, I, I no, 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 Suge, Suge Knight, no way, no way. So this it's bear for is for Suge Knight Ruxpin, you know, I think maybe KB down the block. <laughs> K, KB's KB. been gone for four That's years. Gone. Rip, I man. don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's your, your issue. Best chance. Um, We're closing now. Anyone here Taylor Swift fans? <laughs> no. Yes. No. Really? Are yeah. you? I used to be a Taylor Swift know. fan. Uh, but this is something we're going to talk about the Equality Act here. But let's set this up. Taylor Swift, she had this VMA performance acceptance speech where she promoted the Equality Act and uh, then called out the White House for not responding to her petition. Here's the speech. At the end of this video, there was a petition, and there still is a petition. There's four Woo! dudes up there. <laughs> For the equality. Well, one of them is Basically Dennis Rodman. F the couch the <laughs> the and I want to thank everyone who signed that petition because it now has half a million signatures, which. Apple, which is getting cocky. She's gaining confidence. Oh. Which is five times the amount that it would need to warrant a response from the White House. Ooh, look. She's got a little lilt there. Got a little yeah. lilt. Snap, snap. <laughs> Guess what? That would mean anything if uh, everything that she just said was not factually <laughs> incorrect. So it brings us to this week's What a Piece of All right, we're going to talk about... <laughs> It's always a short, I love people that. get Intro. jarred if you're listening on it. audio, sorry. But we're going to get to the Equality Act, but th this whole speech, let me do this, just rattle this off. First, Miss Swift, you're not actually wearing a watch, right? So when she does the looking at the watch, I understand you're trying to be, that's like a four-year-old, just, you, you, this was obviously premeditated, put on a watch. Second, the White House only has to respond if you submit a petition through whitehouse.gov. Yours was a change.org petition. And you didn't even address it to the White House, you addressed it to the Senate, sweetheart. And by the way, even though we know that you've ditched all of your people and teardrops on your guitar and you're going for the pop world now to hang out with people like Lena Dunham, you didn't have to throw your dad under the bus and have him delete all of his social media just because he happens to be a Republican. Piece of s***. Move. And by the way, you're a cute girl. How much makeup you're wearing these? You're looking more and more like a tranny. And by the way, don't take my word for it. John Travolta was clearly confused. Oh, oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. And he sleeps with a lot of trannies. <laughs> And do you, you always know. have to act, Taylor Swift, do you, we're going to get to the equality, but do you always have to act like you're surprised every time you win an award? This is like, yeah. what, your 42nd award? It's not a Grammy. Oh, oh, it's me? an MTV award for a music video, which is the most played, most popular video of the year. What? Ah, ah, what? Yeah. what? Surprise. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. But you know what? I do have a petition that has more than five times. Shut up, Taylor Swift. <laughs> she had this look on her face like someone just said, I'll finish with the abortion, Miss Swift. <laughs> oh, oh, you're oh, all ready really? to go. Oh, my wow. I'm so thrilled. That is go. cruel. What do you think, Gerald B? All right. On to the Equality Act and why it sucks. <laughs> This is, this is one of those things that sounds good, so right? Stupid. The Equality Act. You set up the doll. By the way, I love the crappy golf shirt. You really captured the essence. Exactly. And G. Morgan Jr., by the way, is doing his back surgery went well. We do. We, we love yes. you, Gerald. Just, you know, get off the pain pills. Um, <laughs> we wild. don't want you to be like the D.C. guy yelling, eat my butt. <laughs> oh, this sounds sound like good. Quick. The Equality Act. Just like... Pro-choice. Sounds good. Uh -huh. The Green New Deal. Actually, that doesn't even really sound good. That does sound a little bit authoritarian. You know, you plan to see people doing a goose step when it's the New Deal. But, you know, I get it. The point is, this sounds good. And she said, the, the bill basically means that everyone gets treated equally. No. No. Let me get into the Equality Act and why it's uh, incredibly dangerous and corrosive, okay? The bill prohibits, to quote it exactly, discrimination on the basis of sex, gender, identity, and sexual orientation. Okay, I understand discrimination based on sex. I understand sexual orientation. Get it. Key takeaway here, though, is gender identity. Mm. 
It's not defined at all in right. any real yeah. way when you look at the bill. So someone can just identify as a woman and federal law demands that everyone treat them that way. That's a problem. Yeah. Bill, do you see some of the complications? So, that so this is one of the things people think. They go, oh, well, I'm just going to put a law into place and decide it's going to be easy. Oh, I want equal rights. I mean, obviously, that's not what the rule and what the law is about, and you've already <laughs> said that. But when you actually have to apply it, how are you going to apply something so undefined and malleable as gender identity? I mean, everyone has a problem with just even yeah. understanding, okay, so if I decide to change today, if Trump decides he wants to identify as a woman, is it now we have our first woman president and everyone's going to run to his backing? Of course not. And yet, these are the types of laws that are supported that don't actually talk about how you're actually going to apply it in real life. Right. They just want to stay in the high level in the clouds. And then when someone goes, well, I'd actually like a little bit of structure there to know how we're going to follow the law, they start saying, Don't you know you you're hate. not supposed to hate half yeah, Asian exactly. Bill? Exactly. It's wrong <laughs> to hate. No question. That's questions. the problem. By the way, it's not as though there isn't any precedent for this because we can see some complications. So how would allowing anyone to identify however they want potentially be a problem? In other words, why would anyone be opposed to the Equality Act? No one's opposed to equality. That's not what we're talking about. So let's start with this. One reason, women's sports. We've already covered how transgenderism destroying women's sports. Yeah. You have male to female transgender athletes winning world cycling championships. Win and people say, well, that's an isolated incident. No, winning national championships in weightlifting. Smashing four powerlifting world records in a day. And by the way, a biological male is now the number one ranked NCAA women's track star. Uh, trans athletics where men get everything and women get consistent beatings. It's the Islam of sports. Also, <laughs> in a recent meet, this is important to note, uh, said transgender, was first, ranked first nationally, and in uh -huh. a meet, someone placed second, respectively, was also a transgender. For the record, the race included exactly two transgender competitors. <laughs> How many? Two. Where were they ranked? Number one and two. Oh, wow. That's harsh. Gosh. Men just have an unbelievable advantage. Testosterone, we've gone through this higher bone density, greater lung capacity, higher ratio of fast twitch muscle fibers, but we're gonna have to throw this out because someone wrote a college thesis. Yeah. <laughs> and Taylor Swift has an imaginary watch. <laughs> and this is something important to note. People say, well, we're going to deal with sports when we get there. And this is something, and I would like your opinion here on, on this bill, but they say we, we can make a provision for sports. Actually, no, you can't. If it's the law, sports have to follow the law. Now, they can add to it in certain ways. For example, like the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Uh, you see this a lot with UFC when they had this whole testosterone issue going on. It's legal. People can procure testosterone. But the sports organization can say, all right, we don't want to use that because of an unfair advantage. But if a law specifically says you cannot prohibit in any way someone who's on testosterone, testosterone, they can't do it. It's not left open-ended here. That's the challenge that I, I see. I mean, one, one of the, it's, it's again, when you get into the actual practical application of, we've talked about this in the First Amendment, if you actually put a definition of hate speech and then you try to apply it, it falls apart immediately in, in almost every example. And right. It's the same way with trying to define gender identity and say, it's not just the whatever, it's the whenever, right? So someone can say, well, I am, you know, of the 97,000 different versions apparently that exist in gender identity, I'm yeah. going to cycle through through them like t-shirts every single day the rest of the world catch up and if you don't it's a crime right right it's it, you're liable civilly to have to pay money or fines or maybe even go to jail or, or all those types of things at the very least to be pilloried in social media if you can't actually keep up with the changing fluid gender identities and that's a problem and in the same way when you talk about discriminating against folks in a certain way you have to be able to define what the discrimination is right. and when one of the biggest proponents of it taylor swift can't even define it i'm loving the music but stick to it yeah don't try and go to the you're just side. saying i should shut up and sing <laughs> pretty much pretty much yeah so you're just saying you don't want to hear my political opinions yeah you know let's go with that <laughs> <laughs> yes that's not what that's not why you were hired that's not why you're here we don't really care we don't really want to hear them and by the way you're wrong i mean is it discrimination to say you know what you can't do the hormones what but that's what helps me compete. My point exactly. <laughs> By the way, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed because apparently subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. New video every day. Just bookmark the page, check in. And of course, we have hours and hours of content at uh, yeah. Mug Club if you join up uh, lotofcredit.com slash Mug Club. And there's the Crowder Bits channel on YouTube there if you want to see clips and you want to be able stuff. to search them pretty quickly. Another reason here too, uh, when we talk about the equality bill, women's only spaces. This is something that has turned a lot of feminists against others. So, you know, it's, it's turned l lesbian angry sister against blue haired pseudo lesbian <laughs> sister. And that's sad. Um, <laughs> the bill, sad. The man, let me read from mm, the bill. Sad. With respect to gender identity, an individual shall not be denied access to a shared facility, including a restroom, a locker room, and a dressing room. That is in accordance with the individual's gender identity, which again is not defined. Even without yeah. laws like this, 
There have been tons of cases of sexual assault, rape, when male to female transgenders have been allowed to go into women's only spaces. But I'm not saying that always happens, that every transgender is a sexual predator. But most recently, we had Jessica Yaniv, who used these protections in Canada to try and gain access to underage nude girls. And was still championed. trying. Yeah, still, still tr trying to do it. Still, still trying. Still going. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's, it, maybe they're not all predators, but it, I'm not exactly mystified at how many of them are sexual deviants. I mean, yeah. they, they pretty much have their identity focused on their sexual deviancy, or at least their gender deviancy. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't say, so. yeah, exactly, gender. You can't choose your sexuality, but you can choose your gender. That's sure, the new yeah. thing. By yeah. the way, show me your tits. <laughs> yeah. That's Jessica Yaniv. That's what she's sitting, getting into these yeah. change rooms like, yeah, can you help me? Can you help me use my tampon? No. I think you should be locked up. <laughs> no, not at all. I think you should be in Buffalo Bill's well. Um, well it, it, you think about the subjectivity, though, right? Like, uh, like again, and I don't say, though, as to be a rebuttal, but, I mean, think about it's actually worse. I mean, it's worse than that when you think of the practical application of saying, okay, well, hey, I'm going to go to the women's restroom today, and later in the day, I'm going to go to the men's restroom, and then actually later after that, I'm going to go back in the women's restroom, right? And, and all of the places that, um, for example, I mean, I, I know a number of women who, who actually consider the women's restroom to be a safe space, right? Right. So regardless of whether it is or it isn't, you're going to take one person's subjective view of a place where they can go, they can feel safe, and frankly, if you've ever been in a women's restroom, it's always nicer than a men's restroom. Every time. And now you're going to say... I've heard the opposite. I've heard that it gets even messier. It gets it, can. it gets messy, it but they, can. they start off really clean and nice. Sometimes they have couches. Oh, really? They almost yeah. often have couches and flowers and scent machines. Yeah, and it's crazy. Couches? Yeah, I've couches. Seen it. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I snuck but in the there point, once. But like you go the in couches there. are very porous. It's very permeable. Mm. It's, they they it's have gross. their clothes on. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that couch, it's like if you have a couch in a cigar lounge, it's always going to smell like that. No mm. matter where you, you know, you can sell it on Craigslist. It doesn't matter. I feel Do like that's not a white couch. All right. Okay. The couch in the bathroom will smell like it. All right. But my but the but the idea being is that okay you have a subjective view of what should be what should be great and you're gonna have these women who say the safe space that I have in the in the restroom to be able to go there and not worry about men being around or be able to you know cry or to do my makeup or to do whatever I adjust my dress now I have pillow to say fight. under cry. this rule under the yep pillow fight uh, yeah, maybe we're lucky but. <laughs> Now it just doesn't matter, right? Like, take yeah. all the signs off. Anyone can go anywhere. And this is important because it's not based in science at all. Gender is really, it's its really more grammatical. How is it? We've talked about this before. Simone de Beauvoir, you go to the John Money study, right? You get to Judith Butler. It, it, they, this is a very new idea. Even people who believe that gender was socially constructed and separate from sex, they still only believed in two genders. And this mm -hmm. is not scientifically based. It was never proven. It's just theory. It was theory that was supposed to be talked about in college because it didn't really matter, have real world consequences, like most things that are talked about in humanities courses. And then for some reason, people weren't in on the gag, like, let's just open up the floodgates. And even the professors themselves were like, what? No, it was a goof. <laughs> It was a goof. So here's another reason, by the way, with this bill, they're going to be targeting religious organizations, business owners. The Equality Act prohibits uh, against any kind of discrimination, as they put it, against LGBTQ AAIP people from the bill. Any establishment that provides a good, a service, a program, including a store, shopping center, online retailer, or service provider, salon, we'll get back to that, yeah. bank, gas station, food bank, service, or care center, shelter, travel agency, funeral parlor, or establishment that provides health care, accounting, or legal services. They mentioned salon in there clearly because... Because Jessica Yaniv was trying to get people to wax Z's balls. Yep. Yeah. Like, why do they specifically yeah. go so... Like, just say all businesses. <laughs> well, they also mentioned shelters, right? right. So, so battered women's shelters now have to receive men now. Right. And yeah. going back to what Bill said, that's another safe space. It literally is sometimes the only safe place a lot of these women have is a battered women's shelter. And now we're going to allow men in, which, which is more trauma. It's well, and shelters, trauma and by the way, a lot of shelters are, are uh, run by churches. A lot right. of shelters yeah. are run by religious organizations. These right. aren't people. This is what's important to note. When we're talking, there's the letter of the law. There's the spirit of the law. People aren't creating battered women's shelters because they hate transgenders. They're trying mm. to do good. And then you ruin it by saying it's not good enough. Let's allow men there. Yeah. When people talk about it, let's uh, get an example for a church at uh, our church. They had a single, a single mom's night at our church. Oh. This is a big thing where single mothers right. would go drop off their kids at daycare. And I think they would do like yoga or spin class or sometimes they would have like a single, like a matchmaking night with the single men of the church. Oh. So it would be illegal for a church to say, oh, we're having a single mom's night here. By the way, you have to be allowed if you're a man. Yeah. Think about that for yeah. a second. Who does that? Is that really about equality? Again, back mm. to salons. I just—it's so funny to me. They're clearly <laughs> wanting to wax yeah. Jessica Yaniv's testicles and scrotum. Yeah. So, so here's one of the things that I do think that that we all have to kind of keep in mind on the uh, on the conservative side in terms of talking about these issues is 
really if you get to the nub of what the why this rule is around is because of the few of the few examples of folks who are treating other people in hum, inhumanely right i mean there, there's one thing to say jokes there's one thing to criticize criticize the political positions which is what we're doing here and to criticize again the application of those rules it's another thing for someone to say who's listening to this to go out and say you know what i'm going to do every time i see someone who's transgender i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to assault them I'm going to I'm going to attack them in the workplace. I'm going to discriminate against uh, discriminate against them in the workplace and treat them in an inhumane way. And that's that's not what we're talking about. No, here. That's we're not talking, what we're talking about. about the actual practical application but of comparing taking that it, comparing that to exactly. you know what you have a dick there's the restroom is not treating them in yeah. an inhumane way. Well, why can't I go in there cuz there are little girls in there and you have a dick Yep. And now every pushback becomes, oh, now you're a hater. Now, now you're you hate. a hater. Now you hate. Now you're full of hate. Well, I this mean, is how far down uh, we talk about slippery slope. Look behind you. There's yeah. the slope. Because at the bottom. Another reason, transitioning kids. We've talked about this quite a bit, but a lot of people don't know that the Equality Act specifies that kids cannot be denied. People, including kids, cannot be denied health care based on being transgender. We've already seen parents lose custody of their children at a state level because they refuse to pump them full of hormones. Yeah. Now you apply this federally. Never mind that it's the right thing to do. We've talked. Most people don't think you should allow kids to be put on puberty blockers. I think, if anything, child services should take those parents away if they start pumping a seven-year-old yep. boy full of yep. estrogen. Yep. But call me old-fashioned. And this is important to note, by the way, if the kids don't transition, we've talked about this many times, 75 to 90 percent of children with gender dysphoria, they completely outgrow it with therapy. They're put on puberty blockers. Their percentage drops to zero. Suicide attempted rate is still 42 percent. The Equality Act will create a federal legal basis for parents to lose custody of their children for denying them health care if they don't go along with something that has, that has no basis in science. And we don't have any data yet because this is really, really new. Wow. We could be putting all of these kids into a shallow, cancerous grave. So when you talk about loving, when you talk about caring about people, listen, you're looking at a 42% suicide rate. You're looking at bone problems. You're looking at mood problems. You're looking at huge rates of depression and schizophrenia. Like, just telling someone that they're perfect the way they are is not compassion. If a kid wants to eat nothing but s'mores and, 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 and strawberry preserves, you tell him no because it's probably not healthy for him. Yeah. That's the case here. If a kid wants to be put on puberty blockers, you say no. Why? Because because your bone plates haven't fused yet. But I don't want some lady in the white jacket to come in here and take you away from me, so here's your estrogen pills, there you go. Want some Cialis? All right, it's a treat <laughs> no, for everybody. I don't even know if they see Cialis. Yeah, I assume the kids would want Cialis. You can't block them anymore. So anyway, no, Taylor, the, the Equality <laughs> Act is not just basically, we all deserve equal rights under the law. It's like the Green New Deal. It's a laundry list of leftist ideology that completely tries to criminalize any dissent. And just like the, the Green New Deal, by the way, the Green New Deal takes over pretty, I don't want to say a fifth of the economy, because that's when we were talking about health care. The Green New Deal takes over all of the right. economy. Mm -hmm. It basically nationalizes energy and, by all the way, power. also shoehorns in social and racial justice in the green. You're like, why is this here? Why is this here? Black and yellow, you know, right there, precious innocent. Green isn't even in the song about Jesus loves me. Are you me. sure? You, you have sure? no basis, not even a fictional one. So that basically takes over the entire economy nationally. And now a bill like this, the Equality Act, look it up yourself. Please go read it. Check out our sources. Look how loosely defined gender identity is. This would do for the social structure, the societal fabric of America, what the Green New Deal would do for the economy. This takes control over all of it. It removes your control as a parent. It removes your control as a business owner. It removes your control as an athlete. It removes your control as someone who wants to take a dump in peace without Jessica and Eve coming in, waxing his scrotum and taint. All right, we have to go to Tim Pool. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll calm down. I don't know. Bimbo, bimbo. My name is Mr. Susan. You must choose. And now it is time for you to do the choosing. I am Mr. King. My little Tupac, my little Tupac. Grab your piece and do rap. We know you used to be a theater fan. My little Tupac, my little Tupac, we'll kick it with blunts and crystal. My little Tupac, my little Tupac, let's kill Biggie Smalls. I love you, my little Tupac. My little Tupac, each sold separately. A trapezoid for you! Dax! Stephen Dax! <laughs> Deep in your clothes! <laughs> Headlined by Ernest gets sodomized in prison. That one wasn't cut for time. We just thought that was a little rough. Yeah. <laughs>
if you want me to read another one of your letters, use some punctuation. Lock it up, let's go. <laughs> An attempted robbery that was thwarted by a retarded guy in the air vents. <laughs> what? <laughs> True I'm Hold sorry. on, what? <laughs> what? So, are, are you saying that Epstein would have been involved with like actual human sacrifices at satanic rituals? Absolutely. Right. The people say Biden makes gaffes. Biden is the gaff. He is. Like, like the dude's one hair plug away from calling Trump President Taft. But it was just a vigilante retard. Wow. <laughs> and now, a reading from the Democratic Socialist Manifesto with Comrade Cortez. It's become evident that the bourgeoisie is unfit any longer to be the ruling class. The squad is the ruling class now. We run this sh Me, my girl Ilhan, Rashida, and uh, I never learned the other girl's name. It doesn't matter. We're coming for you, Israel. Yeah. Join Mug Club, because soon videos like this will be all that's left on YouTube. I'm always curious about our next guest's dance moves because I found out that he was yeah. biracial, namely because oh. he said he was biracial. Yeah, you can't really. That was tell the only otherwise. way I could tell. Probably. And then I thought, well, maybe he was like you, quarter black, and then it fa turns out he was kind of Asian, oh. kind of Asian, like A that sort bit. of Abercrombie ethnic, where it's like I don't know what it is, but there's something there yeah. that is not intimidating as a white person. It makes me want to buy, you know, low-cut pants. But I don't know what they're dancing. It's like, so anyway, uh, you know him, you love him. He's been on the show multiple times. We've done a Devil's yeah. Advocate with him. Uh, you follow his program, TimCast, on YouTube. You can follow him on Twitter, at TimCast. He has an upcoming live event Saturday, August 31st, uh, with Minds IRL. It's called Ending Racism, Violence, and yeah. Authoritarianism. Mr. Tim Poole, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm pretty good, you know, all things considered, with the event and all that. Yes. Okay. Well, before, well, I was going to ask you about living in a van, but we'll save that for sure. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean, all things considered, with the event for people who don't know? I gotta say, man, it has been a stressful past couple of weeks. We have a, an event, like you mentioned, it's called Minds IRL. The overarching theme is ending racism, violence, and authoritarianism. Something I think you would probably agree with. All th those things are bad. I would also agree. Pretty lofty goals for one live <laughs> event, but the sentiment no, no, I appreciate. But <laughs> but, you know, we want to address the this this cultural political issue, the culture or whatever you want to talk about. And we, we tried our best to bring in progressives and we have many and some liberals as well as moderates and conservatives. I think it leans more towards like the anti SJW type. But that's because those people are so willing to get up on stage. Getting progressives is difficult. So my tr tremendous respect to those progressives who, who agreed to come and speak and sit down. Right. But, but we, we, we had this book. Uh, so I'm, I'm a sponsor. Uh, my, my company, Subverse, is sponsoring it. I'm not one of the primary organizers necessarily, but I am speaking as well. We had this thing booked since March. Contract, signed, good to go. All speakers publicly announced. It is a local event right by my house. It's not like I went to L.A. to put on this big show. Mm -hmm. Within two weeks, when we're about to do this, all of a sudden... We start getting this, what I'm going to call a harassment campaign. It's not a protest. It's a harassment campaign. They're calling local businesses. They're calling all of these different politicians in the state. And they're accusing us of some of the weirdest conspiracy insanity I've ever seen. And it's a couple, there, there are some semi, I don't, I don't want to call them local because they're 40, 50 miles away, but they're these progressive groups. There's as well as an Antifa group from New Jersey accusing the group of like, you name it, you name it in terms of the worst thing you can be. And it's, it's there. White supremacy, pedophiles, mm. you know, the Klan, like all, like, it's like they reached into a hat and pulled out buzzwords about what this is. Well, here's the thing. Two weeks out, and we start getting these harassing phone calls, and the theater tells us to GTFO. And it's the most insane thing ever, that they would, that we would literally have an event called Ending Racism. We, a couple of the people are in the Young Turks network who are speaking here. That's how, like, we're really bringing people together. So I'll tell you what really scares Bring me about this. What you know really scares me is, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, what scares me is that this was a legitimate attempt of following their rules, okay? We've got more female speakers than male. We've got like 35% POC for like, we did everything they wanted us to do. Now hold on a second, and, you said GTFO, POC. Why are you naming cars? Oh yeah, yeah. GTO. I'm not entirely, GTO. yeah. They, okay. the, the, the theater can't like, they, they, they're trying to cancel on us. So we have a backup venue, but there's gonna be a legal issue because we, we will not back down. Look, you can't have a contract for, for five months where you see the speakers, you know what the event's about, and then bend the knee to crazy, wacko 
far left conspiracy theorists who accuse us of everything in the book. Makes now, no sense. Can I ask you a quick question? Who's you mentioned yeah. they? Who's they? I know I read an article about oh. Antifa, but are there organized right. groups like that have publicly protested yes. this, or is it just sort of happening in the dark portions of the world? No, there, there, there's uh, some public. They're not like uh, huge. But there's a couple of groups. I'd re- Do you want me to name them? I'd rather not because I don't want to give them attention. Okay, so, you don't have to so name them, great. but th- these are these are organized groups. In other words, it's not just a random yep. person yep. calling someone up because we've talked about this where every now and then you'll have someone at Vox or someone you know along yeah, those right, lines right, who right. complains of being harassed well, and it's two people with a Twitter egg versus an organization or a concerted effort to shut it down. And you're saying it's the latter. There, there, uh, so, so there is an Antifa group, which is, you know, it's probably a small handful of people in a certain portion of Jersey. There's another group that claims to be a progressive activist group. They have photos of their meetings. So it seems like that's the case. Another group actually has a very prominent uh, uh, activist who's been featured in news stories. So I wouldn't call them famous, but they, they've, you know, they're, they're not, um, it's not like one or two people, but it might be 15 or 20. Right. And then what they're doing is they're rallying Democratic groups to, to send harassing phone calls to local businesses. And it's gotten really bad. You know, the, the theater called us in a panic. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to qualify the statement because of legal issues. But okay. based on what I was told, my interpretation of the frantic and panicked voice was that Antifa was threatening to burn down their theater. This hmm. was corroborated by other people and eventually came out in the press that you know, this guy was panicked. Like, these people are crazy. I can't, you know, they're going to burn the theater down, all this stuff, something like that. It may have been that this guy was just panicking and he saw some tweet, which was a joke. But, you know, this frantic, right. you know, uh, claim. And then we, we so we there have been harassing phone calls. Well, that's important to note, though, uh, Tim. I don't want to skim over that because yeah. you live in this world and I live in this world. You know, for example, with the Vox scenario that was going on where we're going back and forth. And I remember I had a. Uh, uh, Someone who I worked with, uh, uh, who will remain nameless, not someone here, but someone who, you know, it could have been a hairstylist, it could have been a doctor. Let's put it one of these sort of contractors in my yeah. life. And uh, this person said, oh, yeah, I heard you got into a lot of trouble with uh, the gay community. And I said, well, hold on a second. What, what are you talking He was talking about Vox. He had no right. idea. He thought it was the gay community. People who don't live in that world can much more easily be intimidated. So this business owner, the person who owns the venue, they're not reading Twitter all the, all the time. They're not looking through YouTube rebuttals. Yeah. And so the left, they like to use that intimidation. They're banking on them right. not knowing that it's just an Antifa group saying we're going to burn the house down. Because these people who don't live in our universe take it seriously. And that's why we see such severe severe ramifications when we go, well, of course, this isn't legitimate. They're they're organizing protests. They're threatening violence. Like, this is all established. And it's my neighborhood. It's, it's within a few miles of my house. Right. And they're they're coming from 50 to 100 miles away, calling it self-defense. Isn't yeah. that isn't that isn't wow. that mind numbing? But what I was going to say earlier, what's what's scary about this to me is we played by all of their rules. We got progressives. We, we have more women than men. We did everything they asked of us. We have a headliner who is a person of color, famous anti-racist, and they still accuse us of being alt-right, white supremacist, all of this nonsense. And you're right about these people who aren't living in this world. When they get a phone call saying, I'm going to destroy your business and take your job away, yeah, they panic. Right. And then they start hearing from their friends saying, what's going on? You're having Nazis at your venue? And they're like, no, it's a lie. Right. But you know what? When you get 50 phone calls to your business, they start putting fake reviews on your business to smear you and, and slander you. It has a real impact on small businesses in a small town. Sure. You know, for us, I get smeared all day, every day. I'm like, whatever, man, it's the internet. But right. for a, a local venue, so yeah. we, we actually have, we have two venues in Pittman, New Jersey. The theater gave us the boot, which they can't because we have a contract, but whatever, we found another venue. But the VIP brewery has defended us. And, you know, they're the ones who are getting the brunt of it now because, you know, when the lies and the slanders and the smears came in saying it's Nazis and all that, these people actually did their due diligence and said, what are you talking about? It's yeah. like a young Turks guy who's going to be hanging out. These people are nuts. Well, we, we've well, always done so- uh, at party at shows recently. We do uh, after parties and uh, people can only get in if they have a mug. And uh, we, usually, we use cigar lounges because cigar lounges tend to be overwhelmingly conservative. And uh, it's sort of countercultural. So a lot of the owners are like, ah, yeah. I was like, well, just so you know, you can ask me. He's like, ah, I don't give a shit. He's like, I don't give a shit. They complain about this lounge just because they don't like people smoking on the sidewalk. Ah, f*** them. Yeah. Like, that's what a lot of these people say. So, in the future, you might want to look into it. Yeah. But this this uh, this brewery, they're they're like left-leaning individuals. One of the owners is, you know, um, I, I don't want to speak on their behalf too too far. So, I'll, I'll leave their private life to their private life. But, you sure. know, they're Democrats. They're, yeah. they're left-leaning. They said free speech is important. They talked about how, you know, it's really crazy. And, and, and I'll stress this point, which is another thing that's kind of worrying me is, 
10 months ago, Ann Coulter spoke at the same theater. And these, some of these groups didn't do anything, they didn't care. Now all of a sudden we're seeing like kind of a dramatic escalation in a more liberal event is being shot down. But this brewery, they told me that when the protests happened with Ann Coulter, they saw conservatives and Proud Boys, and they thought, hey, this is a great opportunity to start a dialogue with some of these other groups. Yeah. That was, that was you know, so they, they shared that kind of mentality, well, I, that conversation is better. I think I can tell you probably why that is. They, they assume that people who are going to an Ann Coulter show are too far gone, uh, whereas someone like you, you're more moderate, you're making more inroads. Um, that's why we get a lot of people who try to shut us down before yeah. we do shows because they go, well, hold on a second, this tends to be like a big party on campus. Usually we do a venue, it's a couple thousand seats. Yep. It's more of a comedy show, some Q&A, but it's a whole production. And it's not really the kind of thing one should be protesting, but it's because... They just don't want new people to come to the show. And I think you're more right. likely to attract those people than, uh, than Ann Coulter. I, I, I want to make sure that I get this right because I want to move on to another topic here. Uh, August 31st, Saturday. And wh where is the show taking place? Well, I can't give the venue up. Okay, it's going to be the last minute, but it's in, the Philadelphia, it's in Philadelphia. In the Philadelphia area. Okay. So, uh, well, the, web, the website is irl.minds.com, and we're almost sold out. All right. So. irl.minds.com. Uh, and I wanted to start this, and then we'll take it to the web extended because we can always get in trouble uh, on YouTube for this. So it seems to me like you've been running up against this quite a bit, but you also have some people saying, well, you play both sides of the fence because you're not really conservative, you're not really liberal. How, how would you identify yourself? Because I know that you, the one thing you've been very straight on is you will not vote for, for Donald Trump, but you seem to be butting heads with the left a whole lot more than most on the right. Well, yeah. I mean, look, there's a story today in NBC where they claim Trump is racist because he sent out an email where he said, they, they quote him, it's our country, not theirs, referring to Ocasio-Cortez. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. What he was saying was the Electoral College makes America for every zip code, not the coastal elites. It's our country, not theirs. Right. What he was saying is the rich people. They, they twist it to try and make him seem racist, but I read this, yeah. and, it's, and it's an overt lie. So listen, I, you know, I, I look at someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who I, I, really, I really like. She's defended free speech. She's, she's uh, denounced identity politics. She's served her country recently even, and she's someone who, uh, who aligns with a lot of my values, and she has defended free speech for everybody, including conservatives, so it really does work for me in terms of someone I think would be you know, uh, better than Trump, at least, um, as the commander in chief. I think Trump has personality defects, which are, are, are bad in terms of unification. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I think one of the important aspects of the president is being a charismatic leader. But then there's also foreign policy things that I don't agree with. And, 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 and trust me, I criticize Obama all day, every day for his foreign policy trip, too. Right. And I give, I give Trump credit for his student loan forgiveness for the veterans. But, uh, you know, Trump is playing the Republican angle. And I don't, I, there's core principles there I'm not going to support. But I don't, I don't hate Trump, uh, I, I just think he's boorish and uh, and rude, but that's not, you know. These are very light adjectives to describe <laughs> Donald Trump. Like, I think right, he's right, uh, right, somewhat right. off color, um, <laughs> uh, but that being said. Well, you see, it, yeah. I, I also try to be, um, I don't know, diplomatic. Right. You know, I, I understand if I go to a Trump supporter and start screaming about how Trump is a nasty guy and like the worst in the world, it's it's going to break apart our ability to communicate. Yes. So I need I need to have respect for people who disagree with me and, and, and try and understand them. And that's and that's the thing, too, about the event we're hosting. We have Daryl Davis. Right. That's He's like, de-radicalized uh, quite a few KK, former KKK members. If people right. don't know, haven't looked into Daryl Davis. There's a documentary out there about him. But, but his thing was give them the respect they're asking for. Let them express themselves and try and understand them. And that's that's a key to to coming together. And I completely agree. So, you know, I, I, I I'm not a fan of Trump, but I'm not going to go on my channel and screech with with blood coming out of my eyes about how he's a he's, you know, he's Hitler or something right. like that. Is it disrespectful of me to say that Tulsi Gabbard is, uh, is easy on the eyes? No. She's, a, she's a tall, cool glass uh, of water. No. I don't think so. I, yeah. I, I, I've, I was asked that by Jesse Kelly on his show, and I was, he was like, you know, he said something to that effect. And I'm like, well, she's a very professional and beautiful woman. That's, yeah. you know, you can't yeah. deny that. But she's a major in the National Guard, man. Let, let's, you know, that's... No, that's, yeah, that's, I respect, I respect yeah. her service, of course. Right, she has kind of that Nikki Haley vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that sort of that golden skin, dark hair, very... They always yeah. dress really well. And I don't, just mean, I don't just mean she's hot. I mean, very well-presented yeah. yeah. women. They, they put yeah. themselves together well. Uh, so I like that about Tulsi Gabbard. Don't like her policies. Don't like the no. platform. But we'll talk about this more a little bit on the web extended for people who are listening. We're going to have to go to break. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this is going to an extension Ooh. now. Did 
you enjoy tonight's open? Of course you did. You can thank the hundreds of underage Chinese children animators who've been working around the clock solely for your amusement. <laughs> Join Mug Club today, and maybe, just maybe, we can hire American and let one of these little tykes go to school. Since our last live stream, questions were left unanswered. Did Elizabeth Warren scalp Kamala Harris in the polls? Is Joe Biden still alive? Will Bernie comb his hair? Who are those other people? For these answers and more, tune in September 12th as we live stream the ABC News Univision Democratic Debate. It's going to be the first live stream in the new studio with your favorite guests, the Lotto with Better Drinking Game, and a few surprises. September 12th, DNC Debate. Be there. Hey, it's that time. One live read of the week. First off, thanks to our wonderful sponsor, Walther. You can get the PPK now uh, actually made by Walther. We appreciate them. Our studios are protected by them. And of course, the main sponsor of the show is you. Not like PBS says. Viewers like you, where really it's the federal government. It's actually viewers like you. We're not funded by a foreign caliphate. We don't get any subsidies. We're funded by mugs. So join up at lotterofcredit.com slash mug club. It's $99 annually, 69 for active military, students, veterans. Listen, I think a lot of people out there, like, I appreciate how many of you joined when we had the Vox scenario going on. You understand that that's what's needed to sustain us because there won't be anything on YouTube at all if you don't join mug club. But I think a lot of people don't know, like, there is hours of content that we could never upload to YouTube that goes up every week, daily shows that you don't get here on YouTube. So if you want to support the show, get that content as well as access to the entire Blaze catalog. Join up at lottoworthcrowder.com slash mug club. Uh, change my minds and confronts. They don't come cheap, but this mug also doesn't come. It's hand etched and hand painted. It's nice. Don't you want to feel nice? person who got uh, too into his uh, cuddly hey. Suge Knight Ruxpin yeah. and then drowned as a result. Oh, he is heavy. He has a lot of mechanical stuff. Remember, inside. always deal with the most immediate problem first. Yeah. If you're drowning, your creature comforts of home, like your Ruxpin, it's not, it's not more important than not drowning. Mm. That's true. Okay. <laughs> we no, should auction off he's the He's going to fuck you up, really? man. You got to watch out. We should either auction off the sugar or, or reuse it. And by the way, we do have actually, talking with uh, uh, Tim Poole, there's the extended uh, web extended for yeah. people who uh, are not on Mug Club much longer. Um, we actually get into politics quite a bit, but he's in that van. We have, we've talked about it, we have this super secret crappy news van That's true. that we have it's that bad. we started building yeah. and then we just, we're not going to be using it because it's not big enough anymore. We, we'll probably auction that off at some point. If someone's looking for like a van life, hey. we've updated the mechanics, uh, mechanical issues in there. there, beautiful carpet, awful. Nice. It's nice. red, white, and blue, crushed velour, and it yeah. has the highest roof legally allowable and it still can't go in a parking garage. <laughs> so you could live in there. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, people. Of course, watch supported Crowder confronts. Next week we have. What do we have going on next week? Uh, no, we have a change mind coming in yes. two weeks. Two weeks. Just a lot. A lot going There's on. So much stuff. This is. We talked about this during the. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was life advice. So we were talking about this this week. But I wanted to reiterate this. I, I heard someone talking about this the other day, saying, "You know, this is a dark period for our country." And I hear that talked about a lot, and it's just a comment that's really taken for granted. Let's put politics away a little bit, okay? And I never really, I wasn't a huge fan of Barack Obama. Obviously, we had a downturn economy. But right now, a genuine question to people out there, even if you're not a Trump fan, like the people out there, like what's his name, Rick, whatever, whatever, the people at National Review, the people who were Republicans but hate Trump, and even <laughs> Democrats, do you really believe this is a dark period in United States history? Do you really believe that 10, 15, 50 years from now, they'll be teaching people that 2016 through 2019 was a dark period for the United States? I mean, what, what? Was it, was it a, a recession? No. Depression? No. Unemployment? No. Wars? Not really. Were people being beaten in the street, lynched? No. Crosses being burned on lawns? No. 
It's ama- this is an amazing time in history. And as much as we bitch about things, and I know I get wound up about Taylor Swift, honestly, this is an incredible time, and nobody appreciates it. I want you to genuinely look at your life right now, okay? Not, not just the United States, but let's think about the United States in a historical perspective right now. But I also want you to think of, of, of your personal life. Compare it to actual dark periods, right? Compared to the actual dark periods in your life, Everyone has them. I, I can think of three or four. I can think of one not that long that was really, really tough. So I want you to think of that. Get it in your head. Are you, are you still in a dark period? And let's apply that same standard to the United States. Think of an actual dark period of the United States, the Great Depression. Think of World War II. Think of even after the 2008 crash. Unemployment was through the roof. Think of 9-11. Now let's compare where we are now to an actual dark period. And by the way, if you're in a dark period personally, obviously create a plan, take actions take steps towards measurable progress like we've talked about. It's always the same thing. But if this isn't truly a dark period right now, can we just take a moment to be grateful? This isn't inspiration. This isn't telling you what to do. But just honestly, for a second, right now, when you think of that dark period in your life, what made it dark? What was so hard about it? And if it's not going on right now, say a prayer, do some freaking gratitudes. You might get it in your head. Think about it. What is it? Was it a period where maybe your uh, a relative had cancer? Was it a period where maybe you couldn't make ends meet? Was it a period where maybe you were really sick and you were struggling with chronic pain? What, whatever it was, if you were not going through that right now, even though you have some other issues, can you acknowledge most of you out there that they're probably not the worst? Because we often pray or we ask for things, and then we, don't either, we either don't think that we'll actually get them or we're not grateful for them. This is what happened, you know, Hopper is still doing well. Hopper, we thought, I thought was going to lose him. He had cancer. It was really uh, severe. Chemo's worked. I know we're probably not going to have that much time with him. That's why you don't see him so much in the show, because I'll be honest, it just makes me kind of sad. But Betty's great. Betty's fantastic. But that being said, I have to be grateful right now, because there was a period where we thought we heard that he had lymphoma on Friday and he would be gone by Tuesday. And you know what? I have to sit and go, hey, it's been a rough week, but that's not going on. Thank the Lord. We live in an amazing time in history, in an unbelievably blessed country. So all I want you to do, here's the advice, unless you're in that truly dark period where you can go back to the other uh, crowd or closes and we talk about how to get out of it, how to set a plan, most of you aren't though. So if you're not in that truly dark period, and if you don't believe that the United States is is in a truly dark historical period, the reason I'm using dark period is because this is what you hear in the media all the time, that term, dark period in history. If you don't believe that to be the case, do, do everyone else a service. Walk around with a smile on your face today and be grateful. Be grateful internally and show that you are grateful externally to the people around you. Your life will be a better place because it is awesome right now, despite not being perfect. All right, I'll see you next week.